Greetings comrades, Soviet Gaming here. Today we are making the beginner's guide for Tapped Wizard 2. You will know how to progress for the first, uh, I don't know, 5 to 7 days of the game. That way you will be the most effective and you will learn, well, the game basics and how do you want to build your character. So right, I am at the stage when my character is ready to be awakened, so I have a fully leveled up character and I'll show you how to play the game from the start. So yes, let's do the awakening, that's how you end your current run and you do the reset, the prestige mechanics, so let's do that. And here, when you just start the game, you will have to pick a class and you will have only four classes available at the start. I personally don't think that it matters that much, but the easiest one will be this one, Fire, Light, Maven. Because I like the combination of Ionic Charger with the Firestorm and Fury Deluge. That works really well for me, but in all fairness it doesn't matter that much, you can go without it, it will do, so it's not a big problem. So pick whatever you want, we will go for the easiest run right now. The goal is to get to as high enchantment as possible, to level up the stuff of knowledge to the max level and go for the next prestige. And that's the only thing that matters for you early on. So for us it will be this mage. We also have the traits which is unavailable for the newer players, but when you have it, it's basically an additional trait that will help you along your run. So. Pick wherever you feel will work. I usually go for thick headed because I kinda don't do research at all times, so it works for me. The third one is fate. Fates are optional. When you select a fate, you won't be able to get the mirrors after you finish your run, so you won't have the actual awakening. I did one of the runs already, and uh, it wasn't that hard. The earlier you will do this perk, fairy, the easier it will be because you will get the random perks, but overall some of those will require you to get a better build or so, but honestly, it's not that hard, so you can attempt them at any time, if you feel that it's pretty hard for you to do that, you can always reset and go back to Fateless. We'll do the Fateless run right now, so we'll get more mirrors and you will, well, kind of feel like a normal run, so let's go. Yeah, when everything is set up and you're ready to go, you press remember and your character reborn, <laughs> reborn starts over and start doing their things. So, uh, first of all, the basic things, you will have uh, probably three spells available for you or maybe four, up to you. So you pick one over here, one over here for the basic run with the three spells, it should look like this, fireballs, then this um, Ionic Charger and then the Fury Deluge. If you have more spells, you can move those things to the right a little bit and um, I don't know, we can add additional uh, Ionic Charger. I kinda like that spell a lot, it looks cool and that's how it will look like. Pretty dope if you ask me. Now everything started, you can read about stuff that's happening and uh, don't forget that every run uh, you will be able to get the free stuff over here, the magic die. Don't forget to get it because it's free, so why the hell not? Let's claim the gnome as well so we can get the totem after that. Your main goal will be getting the right perks. And for this specific build, like, your main idea is to get the perfect combination of these perks that will kind of benefit each other. Well, yeah, there are usually two ideas. You will either have the build that makes use of those burn, freeze and other effects, or you will have the build that totally relies on them, or you won't use them at all, so either of those. I personally prefer the one that have those effects, because it's more fun and uh, it have more uses. So we will try to do just that, the fire should burn enemies, the lightning should uh, shock them and kinda use their uh, negative effects in order to speed up other spells. So let's see what do we have, <laughs> what do we get on the first uh, level of the staff. Nothing really good like that doesn't work for us at all. Um, if you're on, on the early runs like you should be, you can do reroll, you can just go with whatever you want, it doesn't matter. We will do the reroll so we will get the good spell, the good stuff that we need. Actually none of those are fantastic, but since we have two uh, those Ionic Chargers, 20 more percent cast speed will be the better option for us. So let's get it. Now we should get more of those spells. 
Sooner or later you will die, you will be reborn and make sure to click it manually so that way you won't be using that later and that way you will get more of those souls in your inventory. Now about the research. I kinda prefer to do them all at once and uh, at first I focus on the soul siphoning if you can afford it. If you are just starting out and not strong enough, you can just go for whatever you want. Like any of those are good and you can do them one at a time. But if you have that non-research perk, this one, that kind of doesn't uh, give you bonus damage when you don't do the research, it's sometimes good idea to wait a little bit before doing that. Now we will order this one and this one and we should be okay actually. As for the obelisk shard and when do you want to do the enchantment over here to reset it, get bonus damage, get bonus research cost, uh, discount and everything. First of all, early on you can do it, well, I usually wait until 20, plus 20, plus 25. You don't have to do it when it's like plus 1 because it's a waste of your time. And uh, later on you would like to get, if possible, do that arcane sensibilities research. That will allow you to get higher bonus from this uh, obelisk shard enchantment. So that's my idea how long you should wait, 25 to 30. So basically with the 4 spells it will be really easy for you, like the enemy shouldn't be that much of a problem. Um, as for the runes, in the normal rune bag I hold uh, level 2, level 3 and level 4 runes, so I don't kinda auto use them yet, I use them for um, the hard missions when I get stuck, the hard waves. Then I kinda use everything I have and go through that, but in this runic unity bag I put all uh, level 1 runes over here, so they will be automatically used. That way I can get more achievements. Now trophy case is a really interesting thing and you should work on it quite a lot. Basically this is an achievement system and each achievement will give you the bonus. So that's what I have right now and uh, all the bonuses here are cumulative, so basically if you get 5% increased damage here and 5% increased damage here, overall you will get 10% more bonus damage. But it's a good bonus, so as you can see I have uh, really good stuff over here and um, achievements is the only way to speed up gain of your rebirth thing, how is it called? Those time shards that are being used in the chronosphere, so... Uh, yeah, the only way to make it faster is to get the achievements and that's basically it. Or play actively, well kinda, semi-actively, and collect the chests. But yeah, we don't do that here, right? We're idle players. So basically early game, you just do that, you run around, you die, you resurrect, you upgrade as much research as you can, you upgrade as much stuff of knowledge as you can, slowly but steadily and pick the right perks. If you don't get the right perk here, don't worry about that too much, don't stress out and it, it's okay, you you will, if you will waste two or even three points, it's not that bad, you can get all that power that you lost here, like overall power back by dying a few times and getting your power multiplier a bit higher, that will be enough. While our guy is doing the basic stuff, running around fighting enemies, let's take a look at additional game mechanics that we need to use. First of all, those are the mirrors. Every time you do Awakening you will get plus 4 mirrors and you can spend them over here in order to unlock more things, uh, you probably know that. And honestly, I don't think that I use the optimal path. For this I will do a separate guide when I'll realize what's the best one, but I kinda liked uh, this retribution for higher damage when you get hit and this magical absorption because I do uh, automatic play in most of the time so I don't control my character and he's been hit way too much with the ranged damage so that kind of speeds up the spell so it's it's really convenient if you ask me. After that you can kind of move around the, the grid and get the points that you need. I would advise going for status fiend that will allow you to um, have additional chance of getting the elemental status effect on the enemy and if your build, like most of my builds, are focused on that, that will be really really useful for you in the long run. So probably you might want to start here and that will make your life so much easier. Other than that, there are different strategies available for this one, as I said we'll discuss it in a different video, but don't worry about that you can reset it, yeah, and, and, and reassign the skills, so it, it doesn't, like, you don't really have to go all the way right from the start. 
At least the first respect is free. I'm not really sure what's the actual price after that. So your first try at this can be done by you and it can be wrong. And it's not that bad. So you won't fail for the like you won't ruin your build. Let's put it like that. You will be able to do that. Now let's take a look at uh, the premium currency. We managed to acquire 447 of those. And uh, well, honestly, the only good place right now to spend those, which will give you the benefit, are those rings. And my personal advice would be saving up for this ring of speed. First of all, 10% more cast speed is a lot. It's a, it's a good addition to your build. Uh, extra mirror isn't that much for that price. That won't help you that much. It will help you a little bit, but it's more for the end game. Uh, this is not like later in the ring isn't that crazy good because, well, later is not really useful anyway in this current state. Extra trade choice in Limbo might be interesting, so that might be a good uh, option to consider after you get the two rings on the left. Extra perk choice is a good one as well, so uh, not the first priority, once again. More totem appearance rate, a secondary, so you can get it later on. So all of those, like all of those over here, mm, are pretty nice. Yeah, I would say, first of all, you go for the cast speed, then you go for the circlet of foresight that will give you additional perk at random when you exit the limbo, when you start the game, basically, the run, and then you will go for the chrono ring and then for the rest. So I'm saving up 1k right now in order to get this ring, and that will kind of boost my casting speed, so it's pretty cool. So right, what's our main goal in the game when we are kind of progressing? Our goal is to get to uh, the highest level of staff knowledge to the max level as soon as possible. In order to do that, since we're getting XP based on the max wave, we would like to get to the furthest wave possible. So if you can push one or two more waves, do it and then do the reset. So before doing this obelisk shard enchantment, enchantment, make sure that you kind of push to the max stage possible. That way, while you will be recovering your power, you will be able to get maximum XP for your staff of knowledge. But from my personal like experience, if it's 25 plus, plus 25 plus, um, while you are recovering it, closer to the end of the timer, you are already further than you currently are when you restarted. So kind of, you, you, you get progress even while it's not fully recovered, let's put it like that. Moreover, moreover, investing in the, in the research manual, like in the analytic absorption here, in the XP research, is a really good idea as well, because that will increase your XP gain, and that will make it way faster for you to grow. All of those research are kind of important, but there is only one way to affect your HP, and that's fortification, so that's the only way how you can make your health higher, otherwise your health pool will be really low and you will die really fast. If you can upgrade your attack by uh, getting the power, that won't work with your HP. But yeah, overall you would like to balance those out and upgrade them when possible, and yeah, you can do them in one go or not. Important notice though. If you are about to use the enchant button here and do the reset of your obelisk shard to get those bonuses, you would like to save up some of those research points over here. Because after the reset, you will be starting getting those research points at a really, really low rate for a while. And the prices for all those upgrades will be way lower. So if you'll save some up, during your current run, like we're doing right now, when we'll get to plus 25, I won't be ordering this research right now, because now it costs about 5k, but after this, it will cost 5 times lower, so it will be 5k, and I will be able to use those research points on other research, so it's a, it's a good idea. And uh, I think we can do the reset right now, so it's plus 24, let's go, we do the enchant, and basically... Right now, we start from the level 1, climbing forward, climbing up, but now with a bonus to our uh, damage and to our research cost. And as I said, now we can do several research with that amount of um, research points that we had before. So that's pretty cool. As for the finding the research, I personally don't use it that much, either for the reasons when I have way too much, this is called gold by the way, when I have too much gold, then I, when I feel that it's not like 
time out, I can do that and start the next one straight away. Uh, but usually I don't do that, usually I just uh, let the research go by itself and finish by itself. So yeah, basically there are not that many tricks to this game early on, later on it will depend on how lucky you are with the, the um, perks over here, early on as well, but that doesn't matter that much, you can overcome this, but if you are in the late game and you got real unlucky with the perks, you might need to reset because you won't be able to push far fast enough if you don't get what you need like for our build it's essential to get the speed cast upgrade for this lightning spell that we have you can actually see all the spells available over here in the ancient tome and you can see that in the ionic charger over here we need uh, this one status affinity when hitting an enemy with the status effect accelerate the spell equipped to the right in your spell book by 130 percent and that will help you to increase your damage by so much but in order for it to work we need other spell to be able to do status affinity effect that means that fireball should burn or those uh pillars of fire should burn enemies so we need some type of burning and there is one interesting thing that you should keep in mind uh Spell cannot have both Tempered Magic and Expedient Recitation, so basically you can either have the bonus damage to the spell or faster casting, and it cannot have the status affinity effect, which is like burning, freezing, shocking and so on, and elemental empowerment at the same time. So if you have elemental empowerment option for you when you level up, don't go for it. Otherwise, you won't be able to have the burn and, and other status effects that you need in order to use this build. If you're using this build, if it's your plan. So there we go, we leveled up again and now we have two options. Both of those are pretty good. Elemental Overload that will allow to have the Fireball out of the Fire Pillar and Elemental Empowerment that will burn enemies from the Fireball. We'll go for this one because that will be the one of the two foundations we require for our build. So we'll get it and now when we fire fireball at the enemies and they don't die, they will be burning. And when those burning, oh my god, it looks so cool. When those burning enemies will be hit by the lightning, when we'll get a perk on it. The amount of fire pillars and the fireballs on the screen will increase drastically. So that's the idea of this build. I would like to show you how it works, but it might not really work. Like uh, sometimes you won't get lucky and you won't get the perks that you need. But uh, trust me, so far from whatever I tried, this seems to be the best, uh, the best build available for you. After that, it's more or less rinse and repeat. Uh, get this obelisk shard to plus 25, plus 30, enchant it, uh, upgrade whatever you can and get the right perks and bam, in no time you will get the required max level and will unlock the next... Uh, Re rebirth i don't know <laughs> the next awakening now let's talk about not really obvious things first of all there is a potion green potion that will kill you you can use it when you're stuck when you can't kill the enemy it can happen or when you kind of feel that you know you just want to reset right now and get those souls in so you can use this potion for that also in the options here you can find the Feather Duster, that will allow you to abandon current character and start from the scratch. So if you created the character and uh, either early on you got real unlucky with the perks or you just don't, don't like it, you want to try someone different, you can press here. After that you will be able to select the different class, so just like that. Moreover, in the settings here, there are additional options. First of all, account management. You would like to have your name in here for synchronization. And to the left of it, there are a lot of detailed options that can adjust your bag size, as I did over there. Adjust the combat zoom level so we can kinda make it uh, far away or close by, so it's up to you, personal preference. And other different things. So. It can be pretty fun to adjust those to your own needs, you can do it yourself. Moreover, there are patch notes, so if you skip them, if you miss them, you can find them here. So yeah guys, I hope you really enjoyed the video, I did my best. If I missed something, let me know in the comments and don't forget to like the video. Let me know what do you think about this guide, if it was useful for you or not. While you go to the comment section, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any new videos on the idle games. And yeah, check the video description and the pinned comment 
for the links we have the discord link over there we have uh, the website link where i'll make the text guide for this game and for other games as well and uh, well there are more useful links you will find whatever you find useful there right anyway <laughs> so yeah thank you very much for watching soviet out the свидания